Hey guys, welcome back to Angel and Angela. And on this topic, I wanted to talk about how narcissists always beat you to the punch. This is why, you know, a lot of times we're mad, we're upset is because they beat you to the punch. These people are overthinkers. They're so, they overthink so much that they become delusional. You don't know this at first because you didn't know delusional people like this exist. You didn't know evil, cunning, weirdos like the narcissists were out here. And it doesn't matter if you're nice to them because they're overthinkers. They're overthinking your kindness. And then when they overthink your kindness, now they're questioning your kindness. Now they're calling you a liar. If you tell this person you love them, they're like, you're lying. You know, if you make this person dinner, they're like, what did you put in here? They're always overthinking. They're always thinking someone is out to get them. They're always thinking that someone is out to get them because their conscience is killing them. They're overthinking everything that's happened in the past, all their mistakes, how things keep happening over and over again, how they're going to get out of this situation because last situation was really hard to get out of. So they bring all this stress, all this anxiety into your life. And you can feel it. You can even feel it in some people, you know, like you can be around, you know, certain coworkers or just people and you could feel their anxiety. It's like um, they're afraid of people. They're afraid of, you know, confrontation. They're afraid they're overthinking things. And sometimes this could be an empath or this could be a narcissist. Sometimes this could be an empath because the narcissist has abuse this person so much putting all of their negative thinking on this person and now this person is afraid this person is trying to survive to live another day from the mental abuse hoping you know they're walking on eggshells when it comes to the narcissist you know um the narcissist is um picking on them every time they're doing something when they're working when they're doing anything productive anything that's going to help you out the narcissist wants to stress you out. They want you to feel how they feel. This is a lot of times where, um, you know, when the narcissist will stay up late at night and it's like, you know, if they if they sleep later or wake up early, they want to make sure almost like they bother you. They wake you up and they disguise it as a joke. And now, you know, when they disguise it as a joke, they're antagonizing you more. They're trying to beat you to the punch and you're like, what the hell is going on with this person? Why are they messing with me? Why are they acting so childish? Like they become a kid and you're like, you know, sometimes this person could be older than you and you're like, and, and then, you know, when you do the wrong thing in their eyes and they're trying to act so mature, they'll act like you're immature anytime that you're happy or you you know, you, you find that, you know, you find that silly, oh girl, you find that uh, silliness, silliness, oh girl, I don't know what I'm saying, S silly, silly, silliness, silliness, yeah, you guys, my English is, is horrible, um, but you know, I do speak multiple languages, so let's just put it right there. Anytime that you're happy, right? Anytime that you're silly, anytime that, you know, um, you feel like you should be comfortable with your partner or, you know, um, or even with people that are really close to you, if you know how to play with them or you guys crack jokes and they see that people find you funny, you know, um, sometimes you say things out the box and people are, they think it's funny and, and, you know, you're close to these people and the narcissist sees you happy. They're envious. They're angry because they're feeling anxiety. You know, kind of like, you know, kind of like when you're going through all that anxiety and PTSD from the narcissist and like people are trying to get you to like just enjoy life because they're kind of concerned about you because they're not used to this serious side of you where it's almost like you can't even have fun you know it's like you can't think of having fun you almost feel like having fun is a sin 
You're like, you're like, you know, you're like a nun. Like, oh, I, I, I can't have fun. The narcissist is going to get mad. I, I can't be around certain people. I can't answer my phone if there's, you know, guys in the background. Because the narcissist is going to accuse me of something. When before you probably met this person, at, at least with me, I had a lot of guy friends. I had a lot of friends. We all got together, male, female. Some of us were in relationships, you know, people, couples. We didn't care. We're just, ha you know, hanging out, having a good time. But the narcissist took all that from me. Um, they made me feel like I couldn't be myself anymore. I couldn't be, you know, it, it's like they're trying to beat you to the punch. They feel like if you have a social life and they don't, you're going to meet someone because that's what they would do. So then you'll see that when they finally get the confidence to have a social life, because now they're bringing you down and they, and while they're bringing you down, now they have all this confidence. Now they get around these, this new social circle and now they're bad talking you to these people. They're sick. You guys, these people are sick psychos, weirdos, like, honestly, you cannot worry about these people. They are weirdos, like big weirdos, all caps, like they are weird as hell. So now what they're trying to do to beat you to the punch, because you got to remember the narcissist is an overthinker. This is why you always have to think and plan ahead, but you also shouldn't stress yourself out. And when people feel that calmness that you have where it's like if it happens it happens and you're just doing your best and you're not you're not going to overthink anything you know you're not going to get your high hopes up but you're you're hoping hoping for the best and you get opportunities that the narcissist can't get because now you've made it to another level they can't understand they're hating on you they're jealous now, anytime you make a mistake at work or something, or you do something, or you might need help in something, they're overthinkers. They're thinking, oh, if I make this person look bad, if I say that this person made a mistake and, and make them look bad, I can make myself look better. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them what you did wrong. This is why they're always trying to beat you to the punch. This is why you have to beat them you know, to the punch. It's like that movie Eight Mile where Eminem, you know, rapped about his life and he's like, I'm this, I'm that. And there's nothing else you can say about me. I have put it on the table. I'm telling the truth and nothing but the truth. Now, come on, make up a lie. I already beat you to the punch. I already, I already told my boss I made a mistake. A lot of times they don't even know that you have connections with these people. They don't even know that you're on a you're on a boss level. You just you know you just don't brag about it because they're overthinking everything. They're they're overthinking how to sabotage you while you're getting opportunities under the table. And the people around can see the narcissist's jealousy and hate because you already beat them to the punch. You already know how they think, what they do. You already know, hey, anytime I make a mistake or something, I'm going to make sure I ask for help. I'm going to make sure I clear this up and never do it again. I'm going to make sure if I do something, I'm going I'm to tell them I did it. You know, I'm going to tell them it was an accident. You, you need to beat the narcissist at their own game because they're always overthinking. And the only reason they beat people is because of that overthinking. Now, when you leave the relationship, you become an overthinker as well. That's where it came from. It came from them, all their anxiety. They dropped it on you. Now, you can live with that anxiety and let it eat you up. You can let it eat you up. Or you could beat these people at their own game. You know they want you to be miserable. You know you shouldn't be miserable. They, You know they want you to stay at home and never move on. You know you should do the opposite of that. They know they don't want you to go back to school or get your career. You know these people are expecting you not to have anything. They're, they're making up stories. That's all they do is make up stories. Have you ever noticed that a lot of narcissistic people, they love to gossip? Sometimes you're dealing with a narcissist and you feel like you're dealing with a Jezebel spirit because they talk more than women. You're like, this person talks more than me. 
they gossip more than me. At least when I talk to my friends, it's like, you know, we update each other. We don't just sit there and talk bad about people and while while you know while you're living in hell too you know we don't purposely go out and break people down and act like certain people can't change their life when you know the only reason you might feel like you could change your life is because you have this the support so don't down talk other people when you might not have what that other person has don't tell people to move on when you don't know if that person has moved on and they're just telling you their story. You're just the overthinking stuff. Anytime some, you, you start telling people how you feel, they start to over... Narcissists start to overthink anything you tell them. And that's why in the end, you feel disrespected by even telling them anything. Because if you say something to them, you know, just like, you know, when I went through a miscarriage, um, I had a friend who... I always felt like, you know, she had a little bit of narcissism going on and, you know, it might not be to the extent of being a narcissist. It's just a trait, but people do narcissistic things and still consider themselves good people because, you know, if you're going to overthink, at least overthink to where you're weighing out all options and you're telling yourself, is this the right thing to say someone? But when these people start overthinking and they say stuff that's not true, you know, like when I had my miscarriage, my friend told me, um, did you do something? Did you do something to have the miscarriage? Like almost making me feel like I did something to go through that. And to me, it was like the ultimate disrespect. I'm like, what the hell do you mean? All I've been doing is stressing out because, you know, the narcissist discard me at, at a vulnerable point. And then on top of that, not only did they discard me, but they keep saying nasty things to me, you know, calling me out my name, you know, just bullying me. It's almost like we're not even a couple. Like It's almost like we were never intimate, never together. It's like dealing with a bully from school or something very childish you're dealing with someone who is an overthinker if you were it, it's kind of like when people test their children out if they're going to eat the candy and they tell their kid wait till i come back the narcissist they're going to eat that candy right away they're not going to think about you they're not they're going to overthink themselves into what you said to them and then they're going to say i don't like rules and they're going to eat the candy you know and then they're and then this is why they have a downfall in a lot of different situations business wise financially relationships is because they overthink things and when someone tells them something they overthink what that person said and then they don't and then they say to themselves since I'm overthinking and I don't like rules I'm going to just ignore the whole thing you know I'm going to just ignore the whole thing um Another way the narcissist defeats people by like, you know, oh, overthinking and basically beating you to the punch is that they pretend to be good people like off, you know, you know, just, you know, right off on top. Like as soon as you meet them, they try to be good people. A lot of times, too, you know, like I said, they like to gossip. They like to involve themselves in gossip and drama and make themselves seem like a good person, like they're giving you good advice and things like that. Um, sometimes, too, when they know you're going to interact with people that know them in some type of way, they beat you to the punch by being nice to you. And you should always be careful about people being nice to you and oversharing and thinking they're just like you because a lot of these people they're just getting information from you a lot of times you have to watch out for the narcissist because like i said they like to gossip so they'll talk about other people and you better believe if they're talking about other people they'll talk about you these are people that are always overthinking they're always in people's business they're always in their children's business they're in their they're they're overthinking everything they're becoming friends with they're trying to be your your friend's friend 
you know, they're always overthinking. Um, they're overthinking what people are thinking about them at the table at a gathering. And they're like, oh, do they think I'm cool? I have to make myself look cool. I have to act like the cool guy. I have to act like I'm indifferent and I don't care about what they think or either either that or now. If they if they feel like they're overthinking and they still don't know if you like them or they feel like at least now you're comfortable with them. Now they feel like, OK, now I can start acting out. Now I can start trying to be the center of attention. They come in like chameleons, like snakes. You know, they're very quiet at first. That's why they're beating you to the punch, because they're studying the room. Now they feel like, oh, I can put my guard down. I can act out now, you know. And now as they're acting out, especially if you got a couple drinks in your system, this is just an example. If you got a couple drinks in your system, now you're thinking they're your friend. Now you're thinking, oh, you know, he's my friend. She's my friend. Or, you know, you're you're letting your guard down. Oh, he's cool. She's cool. You know, now they're overthinking things and they're thinking, oh, you're weak. You trust me just because we're having a good time. Oh, you think we're all buddy buddies? They'll even grab your hand, you know, walk with you. Let's walk together. We're friends. Now they're nice. Now they're, oh, let's chill. Let's do this. Let's hang out. They try to you, they try to act really, really cool with you, but they're like snakes. They're slithering. And, and while you're barely thinking you found a partner or a friend, they're already, they already know they're going to mess up the relationship, the friendship. So in their mind, it's, I know I'm going to mess it up. I know I'm going to keep making jokes and keep taking it too far with you. And I can tell you're a nice person, so eventually it's going to bother you. And I'm, I, I'm, an, I, I'm, a, I'm an awful person. I'm an evil person. And I know, I know if, if I mess with you and everyone thinks that you're this nice, good person, they're going to get me out of this group. They're going to say I'm not invited in this group anymore. I already know I'm going to fuck this up. So what do they do? They beat you to the punch and you're not even competing with them. You're even welcome, welcoming them into your group. Because the people in your group didn't even want them in the group, but they picked on you because you were the most empathetic person to get close to. And now they're using you as bait. Now they're talking bad about you. They're they're making jokes with with your other friends. And these are things that maybe maybe these people, some of them already they might laugh at these jokes because they they might be true. You might know these things are true about yourself, but it's never been a problem, you know, with your friends or with people that they're connected to. It's never been a problem until now that the narcissist is bullying you. They're beating you to the punch because they're trying to make you look bad. This is what they do. This is why they love gossiping. This is why they love, you know, gossiping and talking about people and getting together because to, that's beating you to the punch. They know a lot of people want to feel connected to others. So they'll get empaths, they'll get narcissists to all get together in a group and people are just happy to be connected, that they don't care or they don't speak up when these people are abusing others. They almost feel like they deserve to get abused right along with the narcissist because it's like, you know, hey, you're just mad because the narcissist is smarter than you. It's never it's never about the narcissist being smarter than you because they're really not that smart. They're just evil. They're just always thinking of ahead because of their own insecurities. So this is why they're they're attacking you and it's like what the hell did I do to this person or you know or these people you might be in a relationship or a marriage with them and then they act like you just like you're a stranger off the street like like you don't have history, like you weren't there for them. Like you would think that the least that they could do is at least respect you, right? But they were disrespecting you the whole entire time. They already knew what they were going to do. Their anxiety and, and their planning ahead and their need to win and their, and their fear of being 
abandoned or their fear of someone doing to them the, the, the crazy part is that when the narcissist does all these things to you they're such overthinkers that everything they're doing to you is their worst fear so anytime they have a fear of something they're going to inflict it on you they're going to want you to go through that fear and that's going to make them feel good about all the crazy shit that's running through their fucking mind and a lot of times trust me a lot of times they learn to control their anxiety and everything but if you're someone who can feel energy you can feel their energy you could feel their energy trying to study you and there's nothing wrong with as even as an empath to study other people because i study people all day long you know but it's not with an intent to try to get something out of that person it's just regular I, i'm not preying on that person i'm not a predator i'm not chasing after them i'm not spying on them these people will spy on you these people will look up people that you're connected to you know these people will go to places they know you'll be at these people will go overboard and at the same time because they know they can't control their behavior also plan to destroy you to inflict their worst fears on you this is why they beat you to the punch because you're not expecting it you're not expecting that behavior especially when they're being nice and they're love bombing you you're not expecting that the same the same person that's love bombing you is out here already telling people evil things about you oh i'm gonna use this person i'm gonna move into their house Oh, you see that nice car they're driving? One day I'm going to be driving their car. This, they're already saying evil things about you while they're trying to get to know you. That's the type of person you're dealing with. That's why they're beating you to the punch. They're beating you to the punch a lot of times because they present to you sometimes plans. They, they tell you what's going to happen. They say, hey, you know, when our parents die, this is what's going to happen. We're going to do this, this. We're going to do this living trust. And this is what's going to happen. They plan ahead. But at the same time, they have all this anxiety and it's going to manifest by how they treat you. And then you're going to feel the competitiveness and you're going to feel like this person, my sibling is competing with me. I think they're up to something. I think they might have changed the living will. I think they made another one because they made all these plans they they plan to marry you plan to do all this but then their act their behavior is showing something different because they think that you know what they're up to and they're testing you out they're test they're trying to even make you mad because they want to see if you're you're gonna they they pick at you pick at you pick at you until you explode and then when you get mad they know that when people get mad they they tell the truth about how they feel so you're confused that someone is pissing you off until you explode and then they get some satisfaction and now they're back to their regular selves. You know, hey, let's just go to bed. Let's just not argue anymore. Let's just I don't know. I was tripping. I was I don't know why I was tripping. They they want to brush the whole craziness off. Because they know they beat you to the punch. You don't know what the hell's going on. You're confused. And and while you're confused, they're playing stupid with you. You're thinking they're stupid because you're seeing all these weird interactions with them. You're thinking they're stupid. But they're thinking you're stupid because they're like, how could you have seen all these signs of me not being able to control who I really am? Even to the point where when I'm angry, I'm telling you the truth. How could you be so dumb and not believe me? You know? A lot of times these people will talk bad about people that they get along with just to see how you feel about them. Just to have a story to tell. Sometimes they, they say little things about other people just to see if you're going to start talking bad. They're trying to, and then they're going to go run back and say what you said. They're trying to beat you to the punch. You know, that's how they beat you to the punch. Because while they're being nice, smiling in your face, they're competing with you. You know, um, or, you know, it could be something as simple as, you know, 
someone harassing a family member of yours, right? But then when you come visit them, your family member is telling you, oh, I live next door to some narcissists. They won't leave me alone. They won't stay away from my home. They won't do this. They won't do that. But then when you come over, they're on their best behavior. They're not, they're not making noise. They're not doing anything. And you're looking at, at the person telling you all this and you're like, I think it's all in your head. Because they're very calculating like that. You know, now if you come and stay for a couple of days, if you go out outside, these people, they're overthinking, why do they have that person there? Oh, they got that person there because they know that I ain't shit and, my, and I'm a weirdo and they know I can't control myself. Watch this. I'm going to be on my best behavior. Matter of fact, I'm going to be like Judas and give this person a wave. I'm going to wave at, the, at that person at that visitor and I'm going to say good morning to them and I'm going to smile at them and I'm going to look like a sweet old lady I'm going to smile at them I'm going to look like a sweet old man I'm going to look like a, a we're going to look like a sweet couple and we're, we're going to wave at them they're always thinking of head and they're thinking of hot ways to beat you and if you are around people who don't really understand narcissism at least to the extent that you know it they have a superficial way of understanding it. They might even be a narcissist themselves, you know, or they might have never experienced that level of evil. So they won't be able to understand it. And they'll think to themselves, your neighbor said hi to me. They waved at me and I, and I waved back and and they seem like good people. And because you're so pissed off and you, your anxiety is high. See, their anxiety is high. That's why they're fucking with you. They got problems and they're taking it out on you. But then they're going to act like they don't have problems. And they're going to make you look crazy because you're so pissed off. And now the people around you are kind of thinking that you have an anger issue or you have um, depression or you have or they'll they know maybe you're going through a divorce or they know you're going through something. So they're like. Maybe you're overthinking things or maybe you're taking if they know something that's happening to you in your personal life. We all have problems, right? But people feed off of people's fucking problems. So if you're dealing with someone that doesn't really know narcissism or they're a narcissist themselves, they're not and they don't know this this level of evil. You might have to be careful with this person because they're going to tell you, you know, Maybe you're taking out what's going on. Now they're going to talk about your personal problems. Maybe you're taking out whatever is going on on these neighbors. Right? And you're thinking, nah, you know, what happened with the divorce? I'm over that. I'm living my life. Yeah, I went through a period of time where it was hard to get out of bed, but it has nothing to do with that. But you'll see that people will ignore how you're feeling and the more um upset you get the more calm the narcissist will get even though their personality is not really calm so now this is why they beat you to the punch because by the time that you basically go off and you just your emotions are everywhere that's what that's when they're the calmest that's when they feel the most powerful you know what I'm saying? That's when they're not overthinking as much because they feel like they defeated you. And that's where you're going to see them act arrogant. You know, I never needed you. You're just jealous of me because I'm happy. You're just jealous of me because I moved on. This is where now they're making the hairs on your arms stand up. You know what I'm saying? Because now they feel like, they feel like the whole time they were abusing you, they were overthinking. And now that they finally won, because their intentions were always bad from the start, now that they feel like they won, now they feel like, okay, I can start a clean slate now. I can start a new life now. But guess what? That delusional thinking does not go away. Eventually, they get with someone new and the honeymoon is gone. 
When the honeymoon is gone, guess what? They're overthinking again. What am I going to do to keep this person? I have to keep the facade. I have to keep this mask on. I said I wanted this job. I said I wanted this person. But now that it's happening, I'm getting bored. I'm getting impatient. I'm breaking rules again. You know? Now they're thinking about you. What are you up to? I'm a Hoover you. What are you doing? Is everything good with you? Did you move on? You know? Or that family member is contacting another family. How is she doing? Okay, tell her I said hi. Even though they treated you fucked up, but they're trying to beat you to the punch by making themselves look like good people. And people around you will be deceived and you can't do nothing about it. They just have to, you can't, and, and then you can't be mad at the people that talk to your enemies because then you'll lose good friendships because you're so pissed and you'll end up alone. So you have to let people, you have to let people know you for who you are. That the people that care about you, if they really care about you, don't make them choose. Don't triangulate. Don't even talk about the narcissist. Your relationship with that person is your relationship with that person. Their relationship with narcissists in your life is their relationship. Yeah, you can say I'm going to cut everybody off. But guess what? People are always going to do shit to you that is going to make you feel like you can't trust them. Because that's what people do. People are social people. and uh, Humans are social people. And, and a lot of human beings don't know. That there's rules to being social, that there's etiquette, that there's mannerism, that there's, you know, respect and boundaries. Some people feel like it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. So people are always going to do stuff. Sometimes some certain people don't want to wake up and it's not your job to wake them up. It's your job to just be who you are, you know. If that person isn't sucking energy out of you, then there's you can't be mad at people who are who can't see the evil in other people because that's how the narcissist beats you to the punch because now they're surrounded with all your family and friends and you have no one. So you have to keep being who you are, you know what I'm saying? And you know, even with with me, it was you know, times where my mother would talk to people that I felt hurt me in my childhood and it would bother me. And I would feel like, you know, like, oh, I hate her for talking to people. She doesn't really love me if she's talking to people that that hurt me. Mothers don't do that. Mothers defend their kids. But then I realized that these people were also using her as a tool. And I, and I said to myself, OK, you know, they have a way of brainwashing her. Let them brainwash her. And I'm going to keep forgiving i'm gonna forgive her and i'm a it, it's like god gave me a sign where god was basically telling me like you can't do that you because i used to get mad you know if you talk to someone that i don't like things got to the point where it, god was literally telling me because i love my mother and there's it's like it's just this one thing i hate about her is her talking to people i feel hurt me and I didn't like the way it was making me angry and how I was feeling. But I also knew that I'm in this, I came into this world by myself. I'm going to die by myself. Some certain things, we want to get mad at people. Like, I didn't ask to be here. You know what I'm saying? That type of behavior. And it's like, well, I'm here. So what can I do to make this situation better? Because if I get mad... I'm going to end up losing and, and you know, I'm going to end up losing someone that I that I know is there for me, you know. So God told me, let her find out for herself. Just keep being yourself. Let her find out. And it's like people started showing who they are just because I never spoke about these people. So now she's seeing they're speaking about me. She's thinking, my daughter doesn't talk about you. Why are you talking about her? She doesn't say bad things about you. She she was hurt, but she don't talk about you. Now they get to see, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when even being raised by someone who's an absent father or something, you know, this person might tell you, hey, your mother didn't want me to be in your life. Now you give them a chance, right? 
eventually they start showing you signs of their narcissism and who they really are. And then you're you're like, wow, I was upset at my mother or my parent. And now I realize that you you're the one who isn't shit. And she was just trauma bonded to you. You know what I'm saying? So you start to see different perspectives, but you start to see that the narcissist's ultimate goal is to beat you to the punch. They want you miserable. They want you alone. They want you not to forgive people um, that might have hurt you um, or who aren't perfect, who aren't perfect. No one's perfect. And like I said, everyone is going to do something to you that you're going to feel like they crossed the boundary. But in different levels, you know, certain things you can overlook and certain things, of course, you cannot, you know, depending on the type of damage. Now, I'm not telling you, you know, um, to forgive someone who sexually abused you or anything like that. But if you know that you expected too much of certain people and you were angry about it, it's OK to let go or forgive. It's OK to forgive and know that, hey, um, I just can't share certain things with you because I know that you gossip a lot. And, and, and because you gossip, you put other people in bad situations and you make other people look bad and make yourself look good. And you make yourself look like the savior, even though that even though the same people you're making look bad saved you in many ways. You know what I'm saying? So. This is how the narcissist beats people to the punch is because they know they always have that anxiety. And when you finally blow up, that's when they know, OK, I'm going to calm down and make you look crazy, you know. Um, and, and then, you know, or if you're someone who's just shy or nervous, you know, the narcissist has that little smirk, you know, they're. They're trying to beat you to the punch in any type of way, even with just making facial expressions like you're stupid. And I'm saying this because I've I've been in rooms where I could tell someone's an empath. They might not, you know, they might be going through something. They might not all they might not be present all the way. You know what I'm saying? Or they might have a disability or a mental disability or they might be a little slow. And the narcissist will just smirk at me. I have narcissists that will smirk at me like you know what's going on. Oh, you know this person is slow. And it's like, I don't rejoice in that. You know, like, I'll just be looking at them like, I don't rejoice in that. Like, and I'll still treat that person kindly. And I'll treat the narcissist kindly. And I won't let anyone triangulate me because I have boundaries. And it doesn't matter if you're thinking ahead or plotting ahead. I'm going to tell my own sins. I'm going to tell my own stuff. I'm not going to keep things hidden or allow you to be in a position to tell my story. See, the narcissist wants to tell your story and then they want to give their version of your story to make themselves look like, you know, it was okay to abuse you and use you. That's what they do. You know, um, that's why they beat you to the punch. And while you're sitting here, while they're calm and smiling, you're turning on the people around you because you're seeing them as hostile. You're seeing them as, you know, you're thinking, oh, they, they have an anger problem or they're not all the way there or they're not thinking straight or, or they need to. You're thinking, like, oh, they need to learn how to control themselves because, you know, or, you know, you're you're judging that person or that person almost feels like. You know, they can't be happy. They can't think of anything to be happy about because the narcissist has consumed them, you know, or you might feel like you're going through something and your friend isn't being there for you because she's worried about that's all she thinks about is the narcissist. You know, if you've been there before and you know how people are in that situation, you know, you, you should still have some type of sympathy for them because you've been there too. The only difference is that you got out. Certain people, just like the narcissist will never change, certain people are with the, are, are with the narcissist and they're behaving in a very um, toxic way. 
and and they're bringing that toxicity to other people this is why a lot of times as an empath you remove yourself from people because you know you're toxic and you don't want to you don't want people to see you that way you know what i'm saying you don't want people to see you that way you don't want to put that energy on people but you know certain people that keep coming to you and they won't leave you alone talking about the narcissist you know that there's no amount of words that you can tell that this person to help them wake up like they're gonna have to go through it the hard way and sometimes you have to silence yourself and sometimes they'll get mad at you they'll turn on you they'll start gossiping on you they'll try to one-up you because they're miserable with the narcissist and this is why certain people stay away from people who are dealing with narcissists you know so when the narcissist beats you to the punch, you have to deal with them beating you to the punch. The problem is that sometimes you want to revenge them. Sometimes you want to say, oh, I'm going to do this to make the narcissist jealous. It's not going to work. I'm telling you now, it's not. You can't do nothing to make that person jealous because the moment they initiated anything with you, they already knew like they were going to fuck it up anyway. You're dealing with someone that knows they're going to mess certain situations up automatically they already know that when they were on to the next supply they already knew they were going to mess it up you know while they were love bombing that person they felt like they could probably really change but as time goes on you'll see that they if, if you get a hoover from them even if they disappear you should know just by them hoovering you that they're not just hoovering you they're, they're hoovering other people and that's letting you know when you get a hoover you should just know they're already thinking of a way to beat that new supply to the punch by cheating and dragging people from the past behind. They're trying to drag you along. They're looking for a newer supply and they're triangulating you with the new supply, which is not new anymore. They're already thinking of ways to beat that person to the punch. They're going to blame the new supply for ruining their relationship with you. And they're going to be telling people it wasn't worth it. Like they're a victim and people around them are really going to believe they're a victim. They might even tell the narcissist, well, you should just go and insert, go, go look her up. Just go to your ex and tell her to forgive you. It seems like you really love her. And then that makes that encourages them more to come see you because they like gossiping. That's what they like. And then they like the hunt. So now their their emotions are everywhere. They're overthinking things. And now they're just like, I'm just going to drive over there. I'm just going to go knock on the window if they don't pick up. Now they're, it's like they, they're on a mission to get you and they won't stop. If they got to send you flowers, they got to send you money. Now they're trying to buy you, buy a conversation. You know what I'm saying? And... What's so crazy is that the people around them are believing the narcissist. That's what makes it so fucking twisted is that they believe that the narcissist really wants to get back with you. And they almost look at it like, oh, you guys are really in love. Like, you guys don't leave each other alone. No, this person wants to destroy you because they don't they feel like they don't have nothing to live for. You know, so this is why they have multiple children that they're, they're playing with everyone and they're trying to beat you to the punch again. They're trying to play you again. They're trying to beat you to the punch again because now they'll go back to you, find a new supply. And now they're telling their friends, I went back to her, but she's a cheater. She's been she's been cheating on me with, I guess, some guy she met when we broke up. Now I'm with a, uh, I found someone new. That's how they go from relationship to relationship. And that's how they gain flying monkeys. And the flying monkeys, they're just there for pure entertainment because human beings are social creatures. So the narcissist enjoys that game. In their mind, they're beating you to the punch, but they're really digging their own grave because they're passing up good people that they're not going to come across anymore. And by the time you don't feel anything for them, now they're going to be attracting the type of people they should have been with the whole time, which is trash. And they're going to attract trash and they're going to go through trashy, you know, situations. And then they're going to overthink things again. And then they're going to know that they, they want to come back to you, but they know they hoovered you and played you many times and you're not going for that anymore. So now they're overthinking 
overthinking, overthinking, overthinking. And then they're telling themselves, no, I can't do it. No, I can't contact them. I'm going to look weak. Uh, I already know they don't want nothing to do with me. And now they're overthinking and now they're talking bad about you because they know they can't talk to you. So now they're, they find pleasure in talking about the bad things they did to you. Because in their minds, by talking bad about you, they're beating you to the punch. That's why when you move on and you're happy, it doesn't mean move on just being with a person. Having your life together, advancing your career, going back to school, doing things. Now they're jealous because they wasted all their time overthinking, sabotaging you, gossiping, making themselves look like a good person, you know, while thinking ahead on how to beat you to the punch. When nobody was even fighting with the narcissist, nobody, all these supplies, nobody was playing games with them. They were playing all the games. And now when they wake the fuck up, they're like, Oh, I went to therapy. Oh, I change because everywhere I go, people see through me. They see that I'm evil. They know what I'm they know my next move and now I have to behave and and, and people can tell. So now I have to I can't be the center of attention like I used to be where I used to be screaming at the top of my lungs and trying to befriend the next door neighbor and being a weirdo talking to strangers and in, in public and just always in some weird shit. I can't do that anymore because it gets me in trouble and people start looking at me like I'm a little kid and you know and now I just try to act like indifferent you know I act indifferent. And I act more calm and I act like I think things through more because my mind is always everywhere. But I, I'm learning to calm my mom, my mind down. I'm, I'm, I'm learning that people kept warning me about doing these things over every supply warned me about the same shit. And now when I watch these narcissist videos, everyone knows me to a T. I'm going to tell my story better than you can tell my story. But then they'll go, there's a part of them that doesn't have empathy for what they've done to others. They'll tell you what they did was wrong, but they don't really feel sorry to them. It's like, I need to get compensated for people talking about me as if the word narcissist has their picture next to it. That's basic. They want you to think about them. That when you think about narcissists, oh, that guy right there, he said he's a narcissist. So that's what you're gonna think about. That's the, they like that that you're on. The, they like it that you think about them. You don't think about the positive people, the good people, the victims, that the survivors. You know, you don't think about them. You think about the evil person. You think about the the villain, and they like that. Because it brings them attention either way, you know. So this is how they beat you to the punch. This is how they beat. This is their way of beating the victim who's sharing their story is my story is better. My perspective is better. I understand it better than than anyone can tell you. But no, you can't understand it from their perspective because their perspective is coming from a, a place of having no empathy for the things that they are telling you that they're doing that they know that they've done or the way that they think you know um so the only person that can feel that the only way you can actually feel that is knowing that someone went through these same things with you you don't have to tell me what you did to me you've told me what you did to me i already know what you did to me you said it to my face when you were mad but I had to deal with the repercussions from that. I had to deal with the pain. You didn't have to deal with the pain. Oh, what was your pain? Oh, not not learning how to be in people's business, not learning how to mind your own business. That's what you learned. You learn how to mind your business. You learn how to stop lying. You learn to stop gossiping. Because I don't think you've learned any of those things because you, you're still talking. You should be praying and, and and you should be asking for forgiveness. You should be you should be in the corner for a long time. You should you should you should be trying to figure out how to forgive yourself. You're not doing me a favor. You're not doing me a favor by telling people what you did to me. 
You ain't doing me. It's a favor to people that don't know you. Flying monkeys that don't know you. But you're not doing a favor to me. By sharing my story. By sharing what you did to me. You know. I don't, I don't like narcissists. Because of that simple fact of. They beat all these people. Mentally. Physically. Spiritually. You know. And then they want to come to this awareness. Oh, okay, I did these things. Cool. I, I feel like people can change. I do feel like people can change. And I also feel like empaths can turn evil. I feel like empaths can turn evil too, to be real with you. You know what I'm saying? But it's just the simple fact. This is what I, I, I despise. It's just the simple fact that narcissists, you know, will beat you to the punch and and they and they they're so low down like they these people will beat you to the point where you just want to die you know what i'm saying and and then they they go around preaching you know they go around preaching like they're changed people they get with a new supply they're a different person but you better believe that in their mind, they're, they're still thinking, I can defeat you. I'm better than you. I'm smarter than you. They're looking at people, oh, you're weak. A lot of weak people, a lot of hurt people. Hurt people makes them sick. You know that? That's why when you're not hurt anymore, they can't defeat you. But they still can tell you were someone who was hurt. They can tell the difference between someone who was hurt and who's strong now that you can't break. And they can tell the difference between that and a narcissist that is, you know, that is skilled and that knows how to control certain behaviors. They can tell the difference because you still have hope. You still have that ounce, that ounce of empathy. And even if you keep denying it and you're like, I'm not this nice person the way because, you, you know, it's a weakness to them. You know, you can't show the, that weakness to them, even though I come on here and I pour a lot of this out with you guys. I'm not like this on an everyday basis. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not that person that like that just brines up the room and wants to be everyone's friend, you know. I feel like those are the people that get attacked quick. When you don't care, that's when people want to know more. You know what I'm saying? And that's why a lot of times you'll see that the narcissist, they'll act like they don't care. You know how they, they'll just roll over on one side of the bed and act like they don't care about you. And that makes you want them more. That makes you want to hold them like they're the woman. That makes you want to hold them. That makes you want to squeeze on them. That makes you want to kiss on them, kiss all over their face. You're obsessed with them. Because they have to beat you to the punch by acting like they don't care about you. And, and they could be with anyone they want to be with. They want to treat you like you're an option, but it's a lie. It's a lie. They're jealous of you. They're they're jealous of you because they feel like you can beat them at the punch at any time. They feel like if 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 you really wanted to, I already broke our vow. Already broke our the the um you know the rules of our relationship. I cheated, and you took me back. But I'm a man. You can't cheat back. You know, that's what women are taught. And that's why a lot of women, guess what? Get left by the other woman. And that's why the narcissist ends up with the Jezebel. Because guess what? The Jezebel cheats back. And they're not used to that. They're used to leaving you broken. They don't like the thought of knowing you have friends, male friends. You have people that will look out for you. They want to leave you with nothing. They feel like you have it better than them because you can date people and you can go on dates and people will pay on the pay for these dates. And they feel like you're one of those girls that wants free dates from everyone. And you're not even that type of person. They just know you have the power to do it. And just knowing you have the power to do it, they hate you for that. Because when they go out and get supply, they have to work for it. They have to pay for it. 
So, um, since I'm going on commercial now, <laughs> I'm going to end this now because it's real. You know, you have to stay a virgin. You have to be faithful. You have to forgive when I cheat on you. You have to take all the abuse. And in the end, you're mad as hell because they got to break promises over and over again. And you were faithful to them. And they beat you to the punch. And that's why a lot of women aren't going for that. And that's why a lot of men are mad. You know. And then you have those men who are like, all this shit is weird. I'm not a narcissist. All this shit is weird to me. So now we live in a world where no one trusts anyone. Women don't trust men. Men don't trust women. And... You know, you have people that feel like, you know, the narcissist feels like as a woman, you're always going to beat them to the punch. If you get pregnant, you can put them on child support. They're always they always feel like you can beat them to the punch. This is why they destroy you. This is why they'll put you on drugs. They'll make you a heroin crack addict. You'll be on the street. They'll make you lose your children. They'll make you lose the respect of your children because now you can't control your emotions and they know women are emotional. They feed off of that. They're arguing with you knowing damn well they have no empathy, no feelings, no emotions, but they know you're the emotional one. And they're, they're, they're acting like, I don't know why you're acting so crazy, right? They're recording you. They're going to get your kids taken away. They're going to make you look crazy because they're trying to beat you to the punch. They, they're they in a competition with women when you're with narcissist men. And with, when you're with a, a narcissist, narcissistic woman, you know, she she hates men. She feels like, you know, um, really, she hates narcissists. You know, she's looking for the good guy, you know, Um She's trying to beat you to the punch. She thinks you're going to end up being like the, the narcissist in her life. That she's dealt with. And you might be a good person. But that's what she's thinking. She's thinking, oh, that's what they all say. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Or, she, or she's just throwing you off because she's not even let, letting you know how she really feels about things. You know? And anything that you do wrong is going to be held against you. And it's going to be an excuse to beat you to the punch. So um, I'm sending you guys lots of love, light, peace, and your healing. Um, like I said, I haven't been editing videos. I don't know when I'm going to start editing videos. And um, I know this is ghetto. I keep saying the same thing. I know this is ghetto. You know, I got the little ambience going, you know. We're going to different places today. It's raining, even though it's hot as hell. Um, and I just hope that you guys enjoyed this message. And I guess um, I just want you guys to pay attention more to what I'm saying, you know, uh, to understand why the narcissist beats you to the punch and why you actually, once you know this, why you actually, you know, have the upper hand once you know what the hell's going on. Once you know what's going on, these people cannot beat you to the punch. And then by the time they turn around to see, they think you're in La La Land. They turn around to see, oh, let me see if this person's in La La Land. You're right behind them staring at them and they're jumping. Oh, you scared me. You're fast. How did you get to this side of the room? I'm telling you because that's how I, I'm quiet. You know, the way I move and people, I'll catch people doing or saying things and they're just, oh, when did you get here? Oh, I didn't even hear you because they thought you were a prey and you're a predator, but you're not a predator. You're not feeding off humans. You're not a cannibal. They're cannibals. They're spiritual cannibals. So um, I'm sending you guys lots of love, light, peace. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like. If you guys are new, don't forget to subscribe. And if you guys want to book a session and support my channel, um, my booking information will be on the description. Just give me about 24 hours and I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Love you guys. Bye.